Since we're just over halfway through 2015, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity for us to do an updated video on the Marty McFly Back to the Future collection. Let's get started right over here with the Nike Mag, which was featured in Back to the Future 2 in 1989. In September of 2011, Nike auctioned 1,500 pairs of these shoes on eBay, and all of the money that was generated was donated to the Michael J. Fox Parkinson's charity. In total, the bids came up to just under $5.7 million, and actually the co-founder of Google matched all of those bids, so the total amount of money raised was roughly $11.4 million. The coolest thing about the 2011 Nike mags is that they light up. Check that out. Ever since these shoes came out, Nike's been hinting that in 2015, they're going to be re-releasing these shoes with power laces. You'll recall in Back to the Future 2 that when Marty McFly put these shoes on his feet, they laced themselves up. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, if Nike's actually going to release those shoes, or how they're going to release them. Now, in addition to the 1,500 pairs that were sold on eBay, Nike also auctioned off 10 pairs of these Nike mags in person. Check this out. It's my auction paddle and my yellow wristband from the Santa Monica auction. So there were 10 pairs of mags that came in these special boxes and they were auctioned off at Nike flagship locations all around the world. I was at the first auction at the Montalban where Tiny Tempa bought his pair for $40,000. I was at the second auction in Santa Monica and I even went to the third auction at Caesars Palace, but I never bought one of those ones in the crazy boxes. At these live auctions, in addition to selling the mag, check this out. Nike also sold mini mags in a similar little case. It's made out of ceramic. They were around $100 each, and actually they were pretty limited. And then next to the mini mag, you'll notice this little pin that comes in this special plastic case, and they were just giving these away at the releases of the mags. Let's work our way to the next pair of shoes in the Back to the Future collection. These are the DeLorean Nike Dunks, inspired by the DeLorean and they were a Nike 6.0 release. Now a few years back Nike 6.0 was actually an action sports category for things like surfing and BMX biking but that category has been discontinued. You'll notice over here a Nike 6.0 box but you're going to notice over here a Goldwing DeLorean box. In total, Nike made 1,000 pairs of these DeLorean-inspired dunks, and only a handful came in the Gullwing box. Very, very cool detail. Now, I'd like to actually show you some of the details on the dunk itself. Check this out. Of course, it's silver, which matches the DeLorean, but the coolest feature, in my opinion, is going to be the outsole, which is supposed to represent the tail lights on the DeLorean. Let's work our way down the table. You're going to notice a bunch of cool props. All of these were on display in the shoeseum to bring the shoes to life. And then over here, you're going to see a pair of Nike SBs. They're Zoom Tray ADs, and they released in 2008 with very little hype. Now, this was years before the mag was released, and like I said, no hype was generated around this shoe. They sold at retail. Some of them were marked down, and then they disappeared. And nowadays, they very rarely surface on the resale market. Some of the cool features about this shoe are the glow-in-the-dark swoosh here, and then parts of the outsole actually glow as well. Let's work our way to the next pair of shoes, also a 2008 release. This is the Nike Hyperdunk Supreme, and this was actually the very first pair of Hyperdunks ever released by Nike. After this, the Hyperdunk came back in the 2008 Beijing Olympics, and there were pairs that matched all of the different countries. This pair was released at Undefeated in Los Angeles, and Kobe Bryant actually showed up to the release and got out of a DeLorean, and he autographed some boxes. He only signed size 14 shoes, which is his size. There were only 350 pairs of these Hyperdunks that were released, and 10 of them were signed. Let's work our way to the next pair of shoes, which is the Hypermax NFW, and I actually want to compare these shoes to one another. Now, the Hypermax came out in 2009, and it was only released abroad, whereas the Hyperdunk, like I said, was in 2008, and it released at Undefeated. Now, you're going to notice on the Hyperdunk, there's Flywire Upper and Lunar Lawn midsoles, and these were huge innovations in 2008. 
fast forward to 2009 with the Hypermax NFW, and you're going to notice visible air right here. Recall that every pair of Nikes that has visible air is an Air Max. So these are Hyper Maxes as compared to the Hyper Dunk over here. And then also in the title of the Hyper Max is NFW, which stands for no flywire. There is no flywire on this Hyper Max right here, like the flywire cables that you see on the upper of the Hyper Dunk. Both of these shoes are very, very rare. They sell for upwards of four digits, and they're really tough to find dead stock. And of course, they were inspired by the Nike Mag, Marty McFly, and Back to the Future, too. Let's work our way to the next shoe, which is actually a Halloween costume prop. These things released in October of 2014. They were $98.99, and they were supposed to be just 10,000 pairs. Check this out. They light up. Very cool little detail there. Amazing for this to be available for under $100. And actually, initially, these were going to be in a regular size range, but the Halloween costume store broadened it. Check this out. This is my wife's pair right here, which is in a size 5. These Halloween costume shoes are available in size 5 to 15, and they're still available right now. Originally, the Nike Mag in 2011 was only available in size 7 to 13, and the Mag and the costume props are not available in half sizes. I can't help but feel like these under $100 Halloween costume props with this extended size run is going to somehow impact the release of the 2015 Power Lacing Mags. It's like with these shoes readily available for $100 in all of these sizes, somehow, some way that's got to impact Nike's release strategy. You're also going to notice some cool props back here. Here's a hat, like the one that Marty McFly wore in the movie. Some McFly-inspired look-see sunglasses. And then over here, some costumes. The Marty McFly and the Doc Brown costume. I couldn't help myself. These things are available on HalloweenCostumes.com for like 50 bucks each. I've got all these crazy shoes and toys and props. And when I saw the costumes, I was like, it's over. I'm buying these. Let's work our way to the Nike SBs that have come out in 2015 so far. We've got a pair of mag-inspired dunks, which are very cool, some Stefan Janoski Max shoes, and then a pair of Eric Costins. Let's start with the dunks. One of the coolest features on the dunk is actually the midsoles. Check them out right here. They match Marty McFly's hoverboard, which you can see back here, and this is autographed by Michael J. Fox. I actually picked up this hoverboard on eBay and all of the money from the sales of these limited edition hoverboards also went to Michael J. Fox's charity. But I love that little detail on the insoles of the dunk. Now let's look at the Janoski Max over here. We said earlier with the Hyper Dunk Hyper Max comparison, shoes with visible air are called Air Maxes. You'll see on this Janoski, there's a visible air bubble here. So the shoe is a Stefan Janoski Max, sort of an upgraded version of the Janoski. This shoe has the exact same colors as the Dunk. When you look at the boxes, the colors are described as wolf gray, white, and light retro. And light retro refers to the shade of blue on there. Now, let's look at the third pair of SBs, which is the Eric Costin shoe. It was an international release only. And it's very similar in colors to these other SBs, but actually the shade of blue is different. On this shoe, it's Dusty Cactus. There's also a pair of Trainer Endor SBs that look somewhat similar to these Costins with that midfoot strap, and they're coming out soon, and they've been labeled the McFly shoe, but the colorway is slightly different on those, and a pair of Air Hirachis is coming out with similar colors, and those are being named the McFly. You know how it is these days. Every shoe has a nickname, and the nicknames generate hype and help sell all of the shoes, but honestly, a lot of these shoes aren't really McFly or Back to the Future inspired. Anyway, back to the big question, the big debate. What is Nike going to do in 2015? How many pairs are they going to make and how are they going to release them? What I would like to see is Nike make 100,000 pairs and sell them for $1,000 each, which would generate a cool $100 million and it would top the $11.4 million that was generated in 2011. And then maybe have a little bit of fun with some cool silhouettes from the late 80s 
Jordan 3s and 4s, maybe the Air Flight 89, the Air Revolution, the Air Pressure, and do those inspired by Back to the Future also, and maybe auction a real limited run of those off on eBay. We'll see what Nike will do, but for now, it's been a great pleasure walking you through this table, the updated Marty McFly Back to the Future collection.